make us come to the aspects of the creations of the cosmic or the cosmic manifestation. And as this verse, it starts with Sarga, just like we know the different topics of Srimad Bhagavatam. So how many topics? Srimad Bhagavatam describes how many topics?
there was loss in his business and all his family members kind of left him because of lack of finance and so many other problems and then Prabhupada has come to stay in Vrindavan and this is even before he stayed in Sri Radha Damodar temple he stayed in Bamshi Gopal temple on the roof of Bamshi Gopal temple from where you could see almost the entire Vrindavan and specifically the beautiful view of Yamanaji or Yamuna River. So we will, it's basically, I put it in kind of a slides and we will read. And at one point there is a poetry by Sri Prabhupada wherein he kind of refers to this process of annihilation and creation. So we will connect the dots when we come to that poem by Sri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada Lilavrit, Volume 1, Chapter 9, entitled Resident of Vrindavan. So this is basically when Prabhupada actually he was going back and forth to Delhi because he was single-handedly writing, editing and even printing back to Godhead magazines and he would go to Delhi almost every day from Vrindavan and come back and do his budget. So on the veranda of Hai, so this is in Vrindavan on the rooftop of Vamshi. No, no. What is the name you said again? The temple? No, Mataji said the temple. So on the veranda, Bhai could chant Japa and there would be no interruption. He enjoyed a simple, almost carefree life of minimized physical wants. A few hours of rest at night, a little prasadam at noon, the simplest clothing, and he did not have to flatter anyone, support anyone, or manage anyone's life. So more like retired life. His mind and intelligence were free and dwelt constantly on his service to his spiritual master. He saw his present circumstances as a preparation for a greater task before him. Despite his advanced age, he felt that he had barely begun his work. Yet, he felt confident. He had his vision of a world association of devotees. It was not an idle dream, although he was not certain how it would all come about. But he knew his duty. For the present, he would go on describing his vision, the vision of his predecessor spiritual masters in articles and books. <clears throat> but as soon as possible, he should go to the West. Westerners, he had concluded, were not satisfied with a materially comfortable life, devoid of spiritual understanding. More than his fellow Indians, they would be open to the message of the absolute truth. He knew he should go, and he would go if Krishna desired. So at this same time, Prabhupada was trying with his mission to go to West to preach, and he even went to Mumbai several times. With Bhartiya Vidya Bhavan, there were some lectures arranged, and he also spoke at different other engagements throughout Mumbai. But he was not satisfied and he, he concluded, oh, this is just a waste of time. I better go back to Vrindavan and then plan from there of how to go to the West. <clears throat> so in Vrindavan, Abhay, which is true, Prabhupada lived frugally in Vrindavan, keeping exact account of every expenditure and every receipt. He carefully kept a ledger, just as if he were running a substantial business, even though his purchases were only a little milk, a few vegetables, charcoal for cooking, bus rides, and his major expenditure, postage. So major expenditure was postage, which means he was mailing books or, and, letters. and letters. So 
So now comes the poem, a very composed of Bengali poem, Vrindavan Bhajan. Its opening stanzas were especially self-reflective and personal. So the poem starts this way. I am sitting alone in Vrindavan Dham. In this mood, I am getting many realizations. I have my wife, sons, daughters, grandsons, everything, but I have no money. So they are a fruitless glory. <laughs> Interesting word, fruitless glory. Krishna has shown me the naked form of material nature. By his strength, it has all become tasteless to me today. Yasya hamanagrahanami harishyata dharamshanami. I gradually take away all the wealth of those upon whom I am merciful. How was I able to understand this mercy of the all-merciful? Everyone has abandoned me, seeing me penniless. Wife, relatives, friends, brothers, everyone. This is misery, but it gives me a laugh. I sit alone and laugh. In this minus some sorrow, whom do I really love? <clears throat> Where have my loving father and mother gone now? And where are all my elders who were my own foe? Who will give me news of them? Tell me who. All that is left of this family life is a list of names. As the froth of the sea water mixes again in the sea, Maya Samsara's play is just like that. No one is mother or father or person of relative. Just like the sea foam, they remain but a short time. Just as the froth on seawater mixes again in the sea. <coughs> so this is in a connection to our students' words that how this creation and annihilation happen, happens. Just like the sea foam. As the froth on the seawater mixes again in the sea, Maya Samsara's play is just like that. No one is mother or father or person to live. Because in this life we may have this particular set of mother or father or brothers, sisters, wife, kids. And then in next life we don't know what set of this same person is we may have. There is another example in the Shastra, just like if you see in the ocean sometimes there are these two twigs or the leaves, they come together and they are there for a while. And then after a while they get separated. So what is the chance that these same two leaves will come back again and meet, meet each other? Right? Very <clears throat> like in, you know, if you have this pro we have this probability equations and you know, there's almost no chance that so same way this set of father or mother which we have now, what is the chance that we may have the same mother or father or personal relative again? Just like the sea foam, they remain but a short time. Just as the froth on sea water mixes again in the sea. The body made of five elements mixed with destruction, that is annihilation. How many bodies does the embodied soul take in this way? We cannot count. His relatives are all related merely to the temporal body. But everyone is your relative, brother, on the spiritual platform. So now we, you know, like materialists, they always say, oh, you guys, you Hare Krishnas, you're also always talking about negative. But now here, this is a positive perspective to what that negative reading may be. So what is the positiveness here? But everyone is our relative brother on the spiritual platform. This relationship is not tinged with the smell of Maya. The Supreme Lord is the soul of everyone. <coughs> But everyone is your relative, your brother. Oh, in the spit on the spiritual platform, this relationship is not tinged with the smell of Maya. The Supreme Lord is the soul of everyone. In relation to Him, everyone in the universe is the same. All your relatives, brother, all the billions of jivas, when sin in relation to Krishna. They are all in harmony. Forgetting Krishna, the jiva desires sense gratification. And as a result, he is 
firmly grasped by Moira. What is that verse when you check and check on it? Krishna Bhulya Jiva Bhogavan Chakare Ateva Maya Kare Japati That one who has forgotten the relationship with Krishna, then he is being tossed away by Maya, either and thither, life after life. So that's what it says here. Forgetting Krishna, the Jiva desires sense gratification. And as a result, he is firmly grasped by Maya. Srila Prabhupada Kija. So there was a beautiful poem by Srila Prabhupada. And because this purport or this particular verse, like it says, I mean, although it says about the nine different creations, nine different types of creations, it doesn't give in details of those creations. So we just have to be patient and wait for the suspense to be revealed slowly. And um, up to this, if anyone has any questions or comments or would like to add anything, please. Actually, I took this kind of an opportunity, opportunity to, as part of Sri Prabhupada's experience, because <laughs> we are kind of great grand, grand great great grands kids, and we are way below in that line of connection to Sri Prabhupada. So there's always lack of time for us on that particular day, but <laughs> somehow I would, I thought I would, you know, get this opportunity to connect. Prabhupada. Yes, this is a really beautiful poem, man. You know, it's internal power, the mood of Prabhupada, of how he's uh, relishing that ecstasy of being in Vrindavan, but at the same time, he's planning on his mission to go preaching to, to the West, the Westerners. Yes, Prabhu, you have something? When I listen to the poem, <coughs> and Prabhupada said, he had not any money, penniless. It's a very natural, you know, I mean, even in this world, in the material, with anyone, not just Prabhupada, we see that when we don't have money, then we don't have value in that sense. Especially in this Kali Yuga, you know, then people start dispensing from us. Right? One, if we have money, then everyone wants to associate with you. <laughs> but once you lack that particular aspect, then they, you know, go away. And yes, of course, uh, Prabhupada is struggling, but he never, you know, of course, if he wanted, he would have, you know, immediately kind of uh, strike back and, you know, go on with his establishing his business and he could have become million or even billionaire. But he didn't go after that, you know, his, that was not his main, main intention. Even in India, he could have, he was, he had his prayer pharmacy. And even the family, the Nehru family, the Prime Minister, they would order medicines from his pharmacy, right? Although this was a temporary glitch, which in the sense, you know, this, this is the whole Lila or pastime that, you know, Krishna wanted him to go this way, that there's a special mercy of the Lord that he's losing all this money, he relatives, his friends. But then, like your question says, oh, did he come to the West for money? Yeah. Came with a meager, how many dollars was that? Uh, Seven or forty rupees. Forty rupees, right? What is the value of that in that, you know, in seven nineteen sixties? Seven dollars. Yes, seven dollars. And what can you buy in <laughs> seven dollars? And he had it uh, Yes, and even then he didn't think of, oh, you know, I should go first get some job and then, you know, make some, you know, proper situation for my food, clothing, and this and that. No, he didn't do it. He just straight went on to his mission of preaching, right? Go to the park, chant Hare Krishna, and wow. that's what he did. And he even cooked for all these, you know, hippie souls, right? And he did cleaning himself, everything one man showed up. Yeah. Never ever he thought that, oh, I should go get green card or start working or uh, so many other things, 
right? And of course, Krishna provided. Now, to the point that within 10 years, he had more than 180 temples and beautiful temples and you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of assets, right? And he didn't even claim, even after he left this world, it's not that he, you know, wrote checks or he put on his will his family members, no. Right? If, if somebody would have had that much amount of money, they would put something in this, right? <laughs> right? I mean, technically, if you see, if you see the Goswamis, right, they even, what is the Rupa Goswami said, 50 percent of, and they can give her, you know, Prabhupada. He did not give a single penny for his family members or anything, but of course for his spiritual family, he has given all these temples and farm communities and this, just like, what is that uh, famous line? Is that Bhavananda Maharaj that you were Elvisher, ever Elvisher bigger? He's saying, Prabhupada built a house in which the whole world can live peacefully. And I like your tone of when he says that. <laughs> So he, lived, he built a house where every one of us can live peacefully without thinking about how we can get our next meal. Actually, we are having the best meals here, you know, three course, four course. We have for the feast, how many course? Chop and bow, 56 items. Right? So Krishna provides the best for his devotees. So we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be afraid of surrendering under person to this process. And Maharaj, like Maharaj always quotes that uh, from Bhakti Rita Samad Sindhu, Goptutve, what is that Maharaj? Goptutve Varanam. Goptutve Varanam, that Krishna will always provide, or even that Bhagavad Gita verse says, uh, what is that, uh, I preserve what they have and provide what they lack. Yoga Shema Mahamya. So Krishna will provide, is already providing, so we shouldn't be scared of that. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned uh, that before he went to the West, he tried to preach in Bombay. Yes, yeah, Bhartiya Vidya Bhavan. And he and his disciple Acharya Prabhakar, so he invited him to, and he organized because he knew certain people in Bhartiya Vidya Bhavan, which is near the Chopari Temple. just to see the devotees, you know, because they have never seen this 
white-bodied uh, men, women dancing with saris and kurtas, <laughs> chanting uh, Hare Krishna, which they have, you know, most of them, you know, given up their own culture and trying to imitate the West. But when you see Westerners following their culture, then automatically they get inspired. And that was Prabhupada's original plan, which became success. That was a miracle. I think someone asked him a question, oh, what is, can you show some, show some miracle? And he said, this is the miracle. <laughs> All these Westerners dancing in bodhis and kurtas and wearing saris. <coughs> yes, Prabhu? So what is the sign? What is the sign um, that uh, Krishna is pleased with us? What is what? How we know that Krishna is pleased with our sins? Over your center. Jai, Sri Kantapaki. Well, that's a question, <clears throat> and that can be another class, just like Mataji says. <laughs> but in short, Brahma Buddha was not 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 sure that he not consciously samasarveshu bhuteshu. In Bhagavad Gita, if you see this verse, and we see the symptom of those who are, or those who have had the mercy of the Lord, Brahma Bhuta, that is always happy. Prasannatma, that is a Prasannatma, is always happy, is always joyous. <coughs> what is that? Satchit Ananda, Ananda, so bliss or happiness. Prasannatma, no, Shochati, Nashkamshati, so, and there's no lamentation. Is always happy. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nashu Chatina Kamshati Sama Sarveshi Bhuta He is seeing everyone in Krishna. And he is seeing Krishna in everyone. Sama Sarveshi Bhuta Shuma Bhakti Lavati Pranam. Because he has attained devotional service unto me. And there are so many other symptoms if you read Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12 and I think 30. And we can discuss that more about it. So, any other quick comments or questions? And we will wind up here. Thank you very much. Gratraj, Srimad, Bhagavatam, Ki, Jai, Samaveda, Bhakti, Vrinda, Ki, Jai, Bhagavad, 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 Bhagavad,